Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a video on behalf of Art Joyous Sharing. And it has nothing to do with the monthly prompt, but I watched a video this morning at about oh, 4, 4.30, and I could not wait to try this. So this video will be chopped up into segments because there's some drying time involved and a dog who always wants in and out. So, <laughs> um, but I can't wait to show you this idea, and I'm sure by the time this airs, Everyone will have already made these, but I'm going as fast as I can because I am super excited about this idea. All right, let me gather up my stuff. Okay, so the first things you're going to need are paper and some glue. I've chosen the Fabri-Tac because it dries very quickly. This video is inspired by Treasure Books, uh, Natasha at Treasure Books to be exact, and this is how she started. Now, I'm not... I don't know if I really want my first one to be this tall, but I tried to find painted paper that was kind of the same because I want that look on it. So you take your paper and run a thin, I say thin, a thin bead of glue really close to the edge. And if it squeezes out, you can clean it up real quick. I'm probably more messy than what she is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this. And because of the paper that I'm using, you need to line it up really well. Make sure it's a straight edge on the top and the bottom. So I'm, I'm using my little mat here to make sure I've got it lined up perfectly. Pressing down like she did on hers. Whoops. Like she did on hers, you can squeeze it out and then clean it up. I like Fabri-Tac glue because it dries very quickly but I'm not crazy about the smell to be honest with you. It, uh, the smell is rather off-putting. All right so there's my two sheets put together and in the video she um, well I'm going to put the link so you can see the video. Ooh, I got glue everywhere, didn't I? Oh, nice thing about Fabri-Tac. Just get a quick rub and off it goes. Sort of like rubber cement. All right, so there's that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry while I gather up the rest of the stuff I'm going to need for this, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to need, I think, for this next part is the bone folder. You have to do this part before you close the bag up. So you have to decide on this one which one I want for the front and the back, or well, the inside and the outside. And I like this part for the outside, so this is going to be the inside of the bag. All right, so I want a lip on the bag because I don't want the raw edge. Whoops, I don't want to use the raw edge. So I'm going to. Now since this is taller paper, I can give myself about an inch of a lip, and I'm using this mat as my guide. Trying to, at least. <laughs> All right, where's the inch guide here? Let's do it right there. I'm going to take the bone folder. And make sure it's got a nice sharp crease on it, because you want it to look lovely in the end. Um, the next part is where she talks about how she sews the bag with uh, the uh, zigzag stitch along here. So I'm going to go set up the sewing machine real quick and sew it. Now for those of you who don't sew, you could probably take Fabri-Tac and just tack it down and call it a day. But I do like the way it looks sewn on the top. I think that gives it a unique look. So I'm going to go do that real quick. I'll be right back.
A, a thought here. I probably should have sealed my bag before I did the bottom, but it's okay because this is like the prototype. You know, I'll, I'll make others that, where the process will go much more smoothly and uh, much more thoughtfully. <laughs> you know my, me, I always do everything the hardest way, and I'm here to help you not, <laughs> not do yours that way. <laughs> This is crazy. All right, let me open it up a little bit. Put it on my arm, because it's a big one. And go ahead and finish slathering this on there. And then I'll be back in a few minutes. Don't do as I've done. Do as I say.
so I finished putting the eyelets in all the bags and I'm going to tell you all the mistakes I made. First one is that one right there. I didn't switch it from the grommet measurement or the eyelet measurement. <laughs> it poked an extra hole in my bag on the front and back. Cause you know, I'm smart that way. <laughs> First, let me give you a tip about this. Let's see, I can use this one as my example. When you bend down the inside, when you do the cuff and you sew it, make sure that you bend the cuff down far enough when you poke holes in it that it gives it double strength because the, the eyelet in this is past where the fold is. See? It is barely on the fold. So in order for you to have greater strength in the bag, you need to make sure that eyelet is in the doubled area, you know, so it's doubled over so it has two pieces of paper instead of hanging by one. So that's a mistake that I made. Um, the rest of them, you know, like not having them at the same height, just not paying attention. Overall, I am so excited about these bags. I have a feeling that Christmas presents this year are going to be small. And look at this up here down there. All right, there's that one. I think that Christmas this year will be a lot more interesting. These two I actually got in the right place. Yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. These two went below where the cuff was around the top of the bag. See, it's down below the where the sewing is. So it's hanging on with one sheet of paper. So whatever I put in here cannot be heavy. Uh, this one went well, I think. I don't think I poked any extra holes. <laughs> oh, and this one? Not, oh, this one has two holes in it because I moved it, and so I got a little tiny hole there. But we're going to pretend we don't see that, right? Abracadabra. Gone. Alrighty, so all the credit goes to Natasha over at Treasure Books. I simply adore her paper pro projects. Uh, something I, something else I wanted to point out that is different from hers to mine is that I did not cover up the seams in her uh, video. You will notice that she takes book text and other strips of paper and covers up the seam because she used plain paper and did book text and all that. I just printed off paper from my Etsy store and that was it. So I have a seam in the front and a seam in the back, which does not bother me at all and I really like the way it looks I mean I'm okay with the seam now this one I think I put the seam where did I put the seam oh there it is right there if it wasn't for this little nick of yellow here you wouldn't even really pay much attention to where the seam is on that one I really like the way it looks this is very obvious as a seam but who cares this one's not as obvious because it's such a busy pattern with the buttons that I doodled um, it's kind of hard to tell. This one, not quite as bad as it could be, this little white section right here. I'll, I'll give more thought into when I doodle next time, if I do something like this for a bag, that there's continuity, you know, so all the way around all the things match. That's cute. I just love this idea. This one's so busy, who cares? I mean, seriously, it's a very busy bag. This one with the hearts. You can tell there's the seam right there. But, I, like I said, I'm okay with the seam. I, I'm not crazy that the blue showed here. I probably should have scooted it over a little more this way. So it'd be, you know, a little more even. But it's okay. I mean, these are my first attempts at these bags. And, you know, I'm not crying in my beer over them, that's for sure. And this one, I <laughs> did it completely upside down. All the writing is right side up this way. And that's the bottom of the bag. The opening so all the writings upside down on this one I had it turned the right direction and then for some reason I don't know I flipped it over when I glued it and so now all the writings upside down see what happens when you don't pay attention to what you're doing and then this one has the extra hole okay so that's it for me I don't have any stuff to thread through here and you can watch her video to see what she does she just threads it through and knots it either on the inside or the outside of the bag and she's got carry bags which I just think is brilliant just brilliant all right that's it for me guys see you later bye bye